So we're now on number four of Dr. Long's review questions for lectures 17 through 18. And number four is asking how many amino acids longer do transmembrane helices need to be in a lipid raft membrane, assuming its hydrophobic thickness is six angstroms, angstroms greater. So the standard um, thickness of the membrane is 30 angstroms. Remember we solved in the last part of problem three, we found that 20 amino acids were required to cross a membrane with a thickness of 30 angstroms. So this question is just saying, what if it were 6 angstroms longer? So we're just going to do the same exact calculation, but with 36. There's still um, 1.5 angstroms per amino acid. So when we solve this, we find that there are 24 amino acids required to cross this membrane. So we're on number five, Dr. Long's review questions from lectures 17 through 18. Number five states, in studying the primary sequence of a newly discovered membrane protein, you note two hydrophobic regions in which a stretch of hydrophobic amino acids is interrupted by a single asparagine residue. This protein functions to transfer polar molecules across the membrane. What do you think the role of the two asparagines are, and how could you test this hypothesis? So number five is asking you to recognize that asparagine is a polar amino acid. It will most likely interact with the polar molecules as they cross the membrane. Um, and one way to test this hypothesis is by mutating the asparagines to a separate nonpolar amino acid um, and then observe how this affects the functionality of the membrane protein. Okay, so now we're on number six of Dr. Long's lecture 17 18 questions. Uh, the question, the first part wants us to, is asking us where does the N terminus and a C terminus rely of a membrane protein? That's what the MP stands for in the question. I was confused too, so don't be worried. Um, so I've drawn a fake membrane. Uh, this is the inside of the cell, this is the outside of the cell. Here's our lovely membrane. And uh, the first part of this question tells us that the sequence contains lysines and arginines. And we know that it's on the N-terminus of the protein, and these amino acids are positively charged. And according to one of our rules called the positive inside rule, all positively charged amino acids are going to lie down on the inside of the cell. So just from this information alone, we know that the N-terminus, I'm just going to call it N, I'm not going to write out anything else, is, relies on the inside of the cell. And the second part of this question tells us that there's six transmembrane helices, that's what the TM stands for. And there are only small intervening sequences between these helices. Well, the small intervening sequences means that it barely, that the helices barely uh, protrude out of the membrane, whether it's on the inside or the outside of the cell. So I'm going to draw in our six helices within the membrane, and this is what it looks like. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's the end of our uh, membrane protein. And the other end of a membrane protein is the C-terminus. So from this, we can conclude that the C-terminus relies on the inside of the cell. Okay, so the second part of this question is asking us um, how would we test which side of the membrane a protein sequence lies on. And to do that, we use proteases. Proteases uh, cleave proteins, but they won't cross the membrane. And um, as we saw earlier, that the small intervening sequences, nothing is sticking outside of the cell membrane and everything relies on the inside. And since the protein, the proteases won't cross the membrane, it's not going to cut anything. There's nothing to cut up here. So when we put proteases with this cell, our results are going to be negative for any of the membrane proteins sticking outside of the cell. So in conclusion, everything, the N-terminus and the C-terminus, rely inside the cell.